Hi guys, it's Sarah Todd and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I look pretty disgusting right now because I just took a shower and I kind of have a cold. We're not going to talk about that. So the whole purpose of this video is for me to explain to you guys how I got my disability because I know a lot of you guys probably know that I have a disability given the content that I post but you don't really know like what it is or how my disability affects me. So I just kind of wanted to clear up any confusion and share my story with you guys and raise awareness because it's important to talk about the things that affect us to help other people. My disability is also not a typical disability. I hate to say that because there are so many kinds of disabilities, so there isn't one look or way a disability should be. Um, but my disability is invisible, meaning that you really can't tell that I have one just by looking at me. I mean, you kind of can. Um, if you really look closely, you can see that my arms and hands look different, but for the most part, you really can't tell that I have a disability. So my circumstances are quite different from what most people think of when they think of disability, which also makes my story kind of unique. <laughs> I'm going to try to cover as much as I can in this video and answer any questions you guys might have, but I know I'll probably miss some stuff and you guys will probably still be wondering about some things. So I want you to feel free to leave a comment um, and ask me some more questions because I'll probably do a Q&A video at some point and I can answer those questions then. Okay, so I'm going to stop rambling and quit the introduction and just get right on into it. It all started on April 19th, 2010. Um, I was eight years old at that time, so I'm 18 now, and I had a normal day. I went to school, I was in second grade, and nothing seemed out of the ordinary, nothing was weird. I went to school and I did everything how I normally would, and after school that day, I had ballet class like I always did on Mondays, and I was super excited to go to class that day because we were trying on our recital costumes. And since I was so young, I still usually let my mom help me like with my tights and my leotard and stuff because tights are really hard to put on. If you're a dancer, you'll know that. But yeah, so I usually let her help me put those things on. But since I was so excited to try on our recital costumes, I got dressed all by myself that day. And my mom was like really impressed because I usually let her help me a little bit with my tights and stuff, but I did it all by myself. So everything was perfectly normal and I was even able to put my tights and leotard on all by myself. But I get to class and I'm super excited again because of the costumes and I'm like dancing around in my new costume with my friends and we're like leaping across the studio and just like being crazy girls. Ballet was a huge part of my life. I always look forward to my classes after school and I loved performing in shows. Dancing was just something I really loved. After I was leaping around the studio, I got a really bad headache that kind of went all the way down into my neck and it got so bad like it was the worst headache I've ever had it hurt so bad I can't even describe how excruciating it was to you guys um but it hurt so bad to the point that I was crying which was pretty unusual for me because I never really was a crybaby or anything my friends were like looking at my neck to see if there was anything weird um and my mom was like looking through the window and she thought that they were like looking at my hair clips cause they were new or something. But then her friend was like, I think she's crying. And my mom was like, what? And then she went in and she noticed I was crying. And I told her what happened, the headache and everything. And then she just decided she was gonna take me home. Um, so I got out of the costume and I sat on the bench right outside the, the classroom to uh, like get my, clothes on like over my leotard to leave and I reached down to like pull up my tights a little bit because they were sagging and then my arms and hands just stopped moving and they just like fell in at my sides and so obviously I was really scared and I just turned to my mom sitting next to me and I was like mom I can't move my arms and hands and she was like oh my god we're not going home so Obviously, we didn't go home like we thought we were going to. I thought I was just going to go home and rest, but we obviously couldn't do that. And we drove to the urgent care center, which was like 10 minutes away. 
and I couldn't even buckle my own seatbelt in the car. My mom had to do that. Like I couldn't move my arms and hands at all. Um, so we drove to the urgent care center. I remember I was like crying the whole way there because my neck and head still really hurt. And then obviously I was terrified. I was only eight and we get to the urgent care place, literally took us 10 minutes. And my mom tries to help me get out of the car and my knees buckled under me. Like I couldn't walk. And it was weird because I could still move my legs. I just couldn't walk. And so that was probably like, I was losing my ab muscles. My core was weak. That's probably why I couldn't walk by then. Um, but she had to carry me into the urgent care center and I was still crying and she was obviously terrified too. And she told the lady at the desk that I couldn't move my arms or walk. And, um, I saw a doctor there immediately, but he really couldn't do anything because it was just an urgent care place. So they sent a helicopter over and they flew me over by helicopter to the nearest hospital, which took about five minutes um, once we were in the air. And it was really scary. I mean, I was a, I don't really remember what exactly was, I was thinking. I remember being terrified and the helicopter being insanely loud. I'd never even been on an airplane, so it was really scary for me. Um, but at this point I wasn't thinking like, oh, my life is changing. I was thinking like, oh my God, the hospital, I'll be fine, you know? So I hadn't really grasped how big of a deal this was yet. So we get there and they take me to the emergency room and I see a doctor, but I basically ended up waiting in the emergency room in a room six hours and the only thing the doctor gave me was Advil for my neck pain because he didn't think anything was wrong and my parents were begging pleading for him to do some tests and they were like throwing out diagnoses at him they were trying to get him to do something and he wouldn't do anything even though my parents were begging with him and my mom told me that she was begging with him so much like to the point she thought she was being rude because she was trying to get him to do something and he just wouldn't do anything and I remember they like put a popsicle in my left hand and they were like, if you just move your arm, then that's your ticket out of here. Like they thought I was faking it or something, like trying to get attention. I don't know, but I wasn't faking it obviously. And anyway, they sent me home. And I remember we even had to ask for them to bring a wheelchair to take me home in. Like they didn't even bring us one without us asking. So that was ridiculous. So go home. I had my mom sleep with me because obviously I was terrified and I couldn't sleep very well. The doctor had said to bring me back the next morning if I wasn't better. So I thought in the morning, oh, I'll be fine. So I was really excited for the next morning because I, I thought I could trust the doctor. And so I woke up and I was so excited. So I was like, oh yeah, I'll be fine. And couldn't move my legs now either. So I literally couldn't move anything from the neck down, not even a toe. And the day before I'd been fine, like hours before I'd been fine. This all happened within like 16 hours for no reason. So my parents called an ambulance and my breathing was labored too. Like my lungs were slightly affected. Called an ambulance, got me back to the hospital. And I saw a good doctor there. I got an MRI and everything, like all the proper tests done. And I was diagnosed that night, I'm pretty sure, with transverse myelitis, which is an autoimmune condition where the body attacks the spinal cord. But I've since been re-diagnosed um, almost two years ago now with acute flaccid myelitis or AFM, which is caused by a virus attacking the spinal cord. And it's basically modern polio. So that's what happened to me and my spinal cord was inflamed from the level C2 to T1. So a large portion of my spinal cord was inflamed and um, that is what caused the paralysis because your spinal cord is part of your central nervous system and it controls tons of things throughout your body, especially movement. And typically when you're affected higher up, um, everything below that isn't going to work. I deal with arm paralysis now. I have a unique situation because most people, if they're affected higher, higher up on their spinal cord, uh, like I said, everything below that will be paralyzed. But how I've recovered, that's not the case, which is odd. So I spent two months in the hospital, um, two weeks were spent in the intensive care unit because 
They thought I might need to be put on a ventilator. I never was, but that was just a precaution. I had plasmapheresis treatment. Once I was done with that treatment, which seemed to help, I moved my big toe after my first treatment of plasmapheresis. I was moved to the inpatient rehabilitation floor for five weeks. And I started regaining my leg motion and I moved my wheelchair with my legs since I couldn't move with my arms. And that's kind of what helped me regain my leg strength back. And by the end of the two months, I walked out of the hospital with some assistance. It wasn't perfect, but I was able to walk out of the hospital and I never saw a wheelchair again once I got home. Um, but I had to continue therapy. I did this day rehab program where I basically went to rehab all day, like for a school day, but I was living at home. So I did that. Then once I was done with that, I just did outpatient therapy for a few hours a day. And by this time, my summer was ending and I was starting third grade and I was homeschooled for third grade and my teacher came to my house twice a week to teach me because I had to focus on therapy and getting better. And I had to really relearn how to do everything. I was only eight, so I didn't have much independence to start with, but I was kind of at that age where you're starting to grow independent. So it was tough to be set back on becoming independent and my mom had to help me get dressed, get food. I couldn't feed myself for a while. And yeah, so I regained some arm strength once I got home, but not much. So now I'm basically living with the same amount of arm strength I had almost 10 years ago. I have partial arm paralysis, so I can't lift my shoulders higher than this and I can't move my left hand. And my right hand I can move, but it's extremely weak, so I can't pick up very heavy things. So this makes it hard for me to do a lot of daily tasks, and I'm living my life with only the use of one hand. So it is tough, and obviously I get frustrated at times, but I like to keep a positive outlook, and I've had so many great experiences come out of this bad experience, and I like to focus on those positive things rather than the negative things. And I am really grateful for the life that I have. And of course, what happened to me was horrible and very tragic and I never could have imagined this is how my life was going to be. But when I say that, I mean the negative things that have happened to me and the positive things. I never could have imagined all of the great things that I've gotten to do because of something bad that has happened in my life. And I also never could have imagined that this bad thing would have happened to me. So the way life works out is pretty crazy, but it's fun to get to educate people on my life and help other people and see the good that comes out of such a horrific experience and use the experiences I've had to help other people and make friendships and just have a great life overall and live my life to the fullest. So. I'm sure you guys have some questions. I hope I addressed everything, but if I didn't, leave me a comment and ask me a question and I'll try to answer it in a Q&A video. If you wanna keep up with me, please follow my Instagram. It's at Sarah Todd Hammer, just my full name. I'll put that in the description box below and please subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting some videos on how I do things one-handed and other informative videos and my dance videos and that you can also comment any videos that you'd like to see and I'll try to do those as well. Thank you so much for watching guys. Have a good day. Bye.